Materials supplied by Microsoft Corporation may be used for internal review, analysis, or research only. Any editing, reproduction, publication, rebroadcast, public showing, internet or public display is forbidden and may violate copyright law. Anyway, um, hello, good morning, uh, thank you all for coming. My name is Hervoy Benko, I'm a researcher here at Microsoft Research and it's a great, great pleasure of mine today to, in, to present to you um, Professor Yoshifumi Kitamura from uh, Tohoku University in Japan. Um, the Tohoku is actually located in Sendai, and I, I met uh, Professor Kitamura many years ago in, in Osaka, where I saw the his Illusion Hall uh, display. That was the first kind of convincing multi-user stereoscopic uh, display that I've seen, and it really kind of launched me in this area. So I'm hoping to see some really fun uh, interfaces uh, uh, coming from Professor Kitamura right now. So without further ado. Here we go. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Benko. I'm Yoshifumi Kitamura from Tohoku University, Japan. The, the first of all, you may not me so well, so now let me give the brief self-introduction myself. So my first career started in Canon in Tokyo, and then I moved to ATR. Advanced Telecommunication Research Laboratories in Kyoto, but just located in the, the border of Kyoto and Nara. Uh, but, so both of them is close to Osaka. But uh, I stayed uh, several years in ATR. And they moved to Osaka University, and they made uh, interactive uh, techniques, research, and started uh, that, kind, that kind of topic in Osaka. And just, just moved to Tohoku University last year. Uh, you may not familiar with the location in, of these cities in Japan. Anyway, it's just a very short introduction of the Japan. The Osaka and Sendai is a relatively one hour flight between these two cities. And uh, Osaka University is a relatively new university in Japan, uh, national university in Japan. But uh, Sendai, we have the Tohoku University. It's established uh, more than 100 years ago. It's uh, basically, uh, it's the first group established in Japan. And uh, maybe you don't know about Tohoku University because there is no such, uh, not uh, many researchers working in this field. So, in this case, this is a <laughs> very helpful Wikipedia of Tohoku University. As described here, the Tohoku University has uh, 18,000 students. Uh, and one of the uh, imperial university, imperial university, is the first, the first group of established university in Japan uh, by government. Uh, seven universities established in the, in the beginning of the new age of the, after the Edo period. And uh, the, 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 there are several rankings, ah, but uh, the, please note that engineering and technology is relatively powerful in Tokyo University. And, uh, Maybe I'm going to start the human interface related research in Tokyo University right now. Anyway, if you are interested, please visit by yourself. Anyway, so as Dr. Benko mentioned, Tohoku University is located in Sendai. I think you have heard the name of the city of Sendai this year several times by TV news program or some other else, your newspaper. Actually, we had an earthquake. Maybe, yes, the origin of the earthquake, maybe here, in the, the very close to the sea, a seaside of the Japan, and in Pacific Ocean, and soon uh, in March 11th. 
And soon after that, we had a tsunami. That area, the very large area is affected by tsunami. Sendai is the one of the city. But uh, Sendai has the one million population right now, and the biggest city in that area. And uh, part of the Sendai city was actually affected by tsunami. Have you ever been to Sendai before? So this is the picture of Sendai city, uh, observing from the hill toward the downtown, uh, looking, looking from the west side to the east. So you can see the downtown area, the business area. And, and you can see that after the earthquake, this scenery does not change at all. But behind the buildings, there must be the seashore. Actually, this is just the beginning of the introduction of the Sendai. Uh, this is the Pacific Ocean and the seashore. And the blue area was the area affected by tsunami. Uh, the, the rings from here to here is approximately five kilometers. The tsunami reached up to the approximately five kilometers. And here is the downtown area, and it's approximately 10 or 15 kilometers, or 10 miles from the seashore. And that picture, uh, the previous picture, taken from here to this direction, like this. The, my office is located here and here. And my house is located here and here. So it was safe. Anyway, after, soon after the tsunami arrived, I visited these areas by bicycle to see what actually happened. And maybe you saw several pictures on that areas. For example, this is. This is actually taken from here to looking to this direction to west. Everything disappeared. Here and here. And sometimes, after that, I, I try to go to that area to, for the volunteer to help the people that who have to repair their own houses uh, to, to clean up the mud or to clean up the everything to carry the by, uh, floated by uh, waves or tsunamis or something like that, like this, uh, or something like this. Anyway. Thanks to your help, the Sendai or Japan is now becoming better. So now I'm here. <laughs> so I'm, let me start my talk today. <sighs> I moved to Tohoku University one year ago, approximately one year ago. And uh, I started the project of the interactive content design in Tohoku University. So content, sometimes uh, referred to the object or a, a piece of image or music file used in application. But we are going to try to treat the content the more wider situation. Of course, the, the content must be observed and enjoyed by the humans. And uh, between the humor and the computer or content, we have to consider about the input or output device. This is called the, sometimes you call the user interface systems. So the, in addition to the content, 
I have to consider about these interactive systems. And uh, through the interaction between the human and the computer, the human will enjoy the or more uh, meaningful content. The content will have the new value through the interaction between these computer and humans. And through the interaction, human will become happy. So this is my pleasure. In addition, it's not enough. If someone in this situation, for example, get angry, or in other words, they will, get, will become very happy, the other person will have the effect by that kind of change. So, in order to make them happy, to make them all happy, we have to consider about the, all the environment, including the computer and the content and the humans. So, <clears throat> this, <clears throat> this is the stage I'm going to consider uh, about the uh, interactive content design in Tohoku University. So, I'm going to introduce some of the related research like this. Uh, so, uh, the, I'm going to introduce several, but uh, some of them started, already started in Osaka University and to continue in New University, in Tokyo University. And some of them just started and uh, it's not, uh, uh, it's not uh, good, it's not obtained the good results that, uh, so far, but uh, I'm going to introduce and uh, let me discuss a little bit about the possibility or feasibilities of the project. Anyway, <coughs> I'm going to start with the displays. The first is the display and uh, may the I'm going to I wanted to develop the 3D, 3D display or three-dimensional stereoscopic display, which is useful in this situation. Children play with their friend using blocks, doors, or sometimes cars. And through this experience, children will learn how to communicate with others like this. And instead of using now mobile individual devices, I prefer this kind of uh, techniques to, to support the face-to-face -face communication for children or younger people. But uh, as you know, it's, it's uh, difficult to find it's which is useful for this kind of situation for in, the, in the field of three-dimensional displays. At least we have to, uh, the, the three-dimensional three display has to equip the multi-user, must uh, have the multiple-user stereoscopic display. Suppose the several users looking to one screen, of the, suppose this is the stereoscopic display. Here, the, he observed from here and he observed from this direction, the appearance must be different from him to him. So they must observe from different directions on if, if they observe the same object. Moreover, if he moved from here to there, the appearance must be changed. So the requirement that I wanted to develop is the stereoscopic display which has the motion parallax for each user. So the, I wanted to develop the three-dimensional display with which multiple users can see and interact simultaneously. If this kind of three-dimensional display is achieved, then we can use this one 
to the above mentioned situation. Interact. Interaction with the three dimensional display is not so easy. The, this is a very common way to interact with the computer. So the using the mouse, the, it is a very indirect way. The keyboard is a very indir in, indirect way to com communicate with computer. But uh, as maybe you can agree with, this is the most recent popular technique is direct multi-touch user interface. Thank you very much. I borrowed these images from the website. <laughs> so, the similar technique must be used for the three-dimensional display. So I, I said interact, but it's not uh, correct. Incorrectly, it's the multi-touch direct interaction is important for even for the three-dimensional display. What kind of three-dimensional display is feasible or have, uh, possible to use for this purpose? There are several different kind of approaches so far. The hologram is feasible, but still difficult to interactively generate it, interactively change it uh, situation. The stereoscopic or autostereoscopic display using the binocular stereo is feasible. And the volume display is, of course, feasible. For example, the stereoscopic display or auto-stereoscopic display, when uh, one user standing in front of the display observing the space shuttle from the side in this situation, if he moves to left, the object must be changed and displayed like this. In order to achieve this, the, the user's position must be detected in some ways by using some kind of a tracker or some other devices. And of course, if he moves to right, the object must be changed like this. Then he has to observe from the direction from the right side of the same object. This is called the motion parallax. This is the interactive stereoscopic display for, multi, uh, for single user. But what happens if there are three persons standing in front of the display? Now, the position of the user, position being point is measured by, uh, A is measured, and he's a primary person at this moment. The, he observed the space shuttle from the side correctly. But ha what happened for B and C standing in client position? He must observe the distorted image because the display showed the I image for only A. The position of the B and C, it's, uh, the image is distorted like that. But uh, he, they have to observe the image like that. So in order to achieve this, the stereoscopic display must sh generate and show, in this case, the stereoscopic left and right image for three persons in total, the six images must be generated simultaneously. Multiple users stereo. You have a opportunity to see the stereoscopic image in the Sierra. But uh, yeah, this is for the multiple users stereo, but uh, it's not interactive. This is interactive. The users can change the viewing position and directions freely, but I don't want to my children to wear the head-mount display. 
like this type of situation. So the binocular stereoscopic approaches the limitations. So how about the volumetric displays? I think this is popular. Uh, as you know, the, the screen is rotating very fast inside of the ball. And the other approach is like this, is also the similar the screen is rotating in the cylinder. And the mirror is also the rotating here. And the LCD panel is rotating inside this cylinder. In any cases, the interaction must be in direct way because the users cannot reach to the, the his finger to the position, exactly exact position of the image. This is dangerous in this case. So we developed the illusion hole. This is the multi-user stereoscopic display, uh, which developed uh, almost 10 years ago. I may, you may know the detail of the illusion hole because we developed it 10 years ago. But let me introduce a little bit about the principle. The illusion hole consists of the normal display, horizontal display, and the display mask with a hole in its center. The, when we have the three users, the, the each user can observe the stereoscopic image on the hole. So for example, if the user A looks the display through the hole, he can observe the image drawn area only for A. The other areas, for example, the image drawing area B and C will be adequately occluded by the mask. And from the viewpoint of B, only the viewpoint area of B can be observed to the user B. So this is the basic principle. And according to the position measured by some in the tracker, the viewing areas will be changed according to the viewing position.
Hmm. As you can see, the multiple users can reach their hands directly to the image and the position in the workspace on including the stereoscope image can be completely shared by multiple persons. If someone point the head of the space shuttle, the other users can recognize he reaches to his finger to the space at the top of the space shuttle. So this is a very important feature of the illusion hole. So this is because the principle is very easy. The, we draw the pair of stereoscopic images according to the measured viewing position for each user with adequate disparities in order to make the image to the same three-dimensional point like that. By using this feature, we can make a lot of applications. And uh, one of them that just recently started is the direct multiple touch interactions on the stereoscopic images in, on the illusion hole. The, the inspired by the recent trend of multiple touch interfaces, the, I'd like to achieve the similar one on the illusion hole. So this now, the completely complete ones is now still developing right now. The one uh, example was shown in the, the movie. And uh, since I developed and uh, presented the illusion, idea of the illusion hole, the, we started many joint projects with the outside of the laboratories. For example, the medical researchers and the communication, uh, 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 telecommunication companies, for example, uh, like that. The one of the most recent uh, result of the collaboration was the three-dimensional facsimile. Suppose uh, the, in the in this imaging side, imaging side, the, there are they, they have one very unique object, and uh, this object can be shared by three people in this case. For example, this is the uh, typical doll in Osaka, anyway. And if they want to share the same object with physically remote site, how can they transmit the shape of the object to the other side. The taking pictures or CAD, CAD data is very useful, but uh, it's not good. So I took the several images around the object, and then using the image-based rendering technique, we generated the, uh, according to the viewing positions, we generated the stereoscopy of images simultaneously and displayed on the illusion hole at the remote side. So this we call the three-dimensional facsimile. Uh, I skip this one. Yeah. And maybe you can see the, the body of the illusion hole looks similar on the Im Im image, imaging side and the display side. The, at this moment, we designed the separately, but the next stage will be the designed in combined ones with the imaging and the display side. Anyway, we're still developing some application or some joint project based on the illusion whole idea. Okay, next topic is also related to the display. We have the some kind, uh, we have we, we can use the several displays 
in the room. For example, the, for here in the hub one, this one, and that one. So we, in the meeting, we'll be held in these kind of situations. And uh, recently, more and more cases, we have the tabletop displays like this. And uh, we call this a multiple display environment. Multiple display environment. This is very useful, but uh, there are some problems. Uh, mainly the distortion and the connectivity. Almost all graphic system assume the viewing position is just on the horizontal, uh, that is the central axis of the display. So that if the user observes the inclined directions, the image will be distorted. The, for the tabletop display, for example, the, the central axis must be here, for example, but the user will always have to observe from here. So this is not good for the user. Another problem is connectivity. The recently, the normal computer support the multiple displays, but uh, usually the image plane must be located just the left or up or right or something like that. For example, this is a typical situation. One image is uh, spread over two displays, but if you change the beam position, this connectivity is distorted like this. So, in comparison with the Miguel Luna Center and the Sri Ram Sabramanian, we solved this problem using the perspective windows or perspective cursors. Perspective windows provides the uh, display the window uh, presented to the viewer. It is always perpendicular to the viewing direction to the user. If he moves, the user moves, the, this image, virtual image, will be he always changed to the vertical to the user. This prospect, uh, perspective windows is useful when the one, win, one image is spread over several displays. The, even in this case, the image is seamlessly displayed like this. Like this. And in addition to the wall type or table type display, we can use the mobile display like this. And the password cursor moved according to the user's position. The, uh, the, the, the cursor moves according to the temporary generated connectivity. If he moves a little bit, the connectivity will change, then the position of a displayed position of the cursor will be changed.
Okay, let's move to the next topic, the physical tangible interfaces. This is also the 10 years project. Maybe you know the name of the active cube. Do you know? You don't know. <laughs> anyway, the active cubes had the three main features. One, the first one is the real time 3D modeling. When a user connect or disconnect the cube, the computer system automatically recognizes this connection or disconnection. So as a result, the, the computer always uh, recognize the shape of the user co now constructing. And for this purpose, the, each block has the CPU inside of the block. For, by using this one, user can interact with them, like that. The, for example, the virtual object in computer is controlled by the real physical object in front of the user. <coughs> and user does not have to manipulate and control the mouse or keyboard anymore. The input device or output devices are equipped with the surface of the active cube. So the user can directly interact with the cube. So in order to search the retrieve the kind of object, uh, instead of inputting the keywords from the computer, user can just show the example by connecting the cubes. By using the constructed object, user can play. They can control the flying airplanes and to reach to the and cross the river. Now, as you can see, the active cube has always maintained the, sh uh, the consistency in terms of the shape and the functionality. By using this feature, we developed several kinds of applications. The one of them that we showed the uh, last moment of the video was a cognitive cube. This is the tool to measure the human spatial ability. The, the, this is a subject, 
the, the, the target shape was displayed on the, in front of the subject, and the subject is asked to uh, construct the same object of, by using the active cube. The active cube can uh, record the timing which, uh, which block is connected where, which position. So the automatically recognize the process of the user's construction. By analyzing this one, the, for example, uh, it is a, a horizontal axis means indicates the time transition, and the vertical ones uh, indicates the similarity uh, to the target point, target shape. The 100% means that the uh, equal to the target shape. The we measured for the younger and the elderly, the mild, mild Alzheimer disease person, and the the speed of the younger people is very first, and the elderly person is next. And the mild, mild Alzheimer disease person have some kind of difficulties. For example, uh, sometimes toward the work toward to the target object, but sometimes it's not. So the we found it's possible to measure and classify the few humans' spatial abilities. The based on this one that recently started with the University of Haifa, the as a tool to develop uh, that for, for the development of uh, coordination disorders, children. Maybe I think one of the movie works. The blinking blocks is to show the next block to connect it, to be connected. If the user made a mistake, the bubble sign appeared. And by using this constructed one, the children can play. Yes, the yeah, Israel is very difficult country. So, but uh, by using this technique, the the researcher in this area uh, try to develop the tool uh, to help the children. Anyway, the we we don't have enough time to explain more details about our research project of the physical or tangible user interaction, but you may know about the umbrella or FUSA FUSA touch display uh, we demonstrated in the recently in the CGRAPH ETEC, but uh, we don't have time to explain these works, but uh, if you are interested in, please Google or uh, please search in the <laughs> website, anyway. Uh, I have to go to the next topic. <laughs> so map navigation techniques. The, we have the several uh, map navigation techniques. The motivation is come from the problems in current map navigation systems, uh, which has uh, we they, they induce the physical load because we have to switch the between the scroll to use in the scroll bar and zoom to press the plus button or minus button or something like that. So they have to move around it. It's very tough. And during that kind of work, they have to lose the context. 
easily. So we developed the anchor point technique. So we call it the anchored navigation technique, uh, which is the pan and doom and tilt coupling method. It, it is useful to decrease the physical load for the user. Uh, but, uh, so the pan zoom tilt coupling is based on the anchor point given by the user. The anchoring point of user interest is always included in the viewport. So the, it is useful to maintain of the spatial context of the user. So this is the rough work uh, that is uh, to uh, indicate to show how the system works, but I think it's a good idea to show the movie. This is anchor zoom. So the red one is anchor zoom. If he wanted to uh, scroll like this, but always the anchor point is remain in the viewport. By using a double click, he can easily change the new anchor point. So only one action uh, the user can achieve the scroll and zooming. And another example is anchor zoom and tilt. The, like, the tilt in the camera like this, the user can observe more larger areas. And, uh, like this. And the closer area it can be observed very closely by tilting camera. And uh, the, f the area the far from the, the current position is a relatively small, but it's good because this is distant. So this is the idea of anchored, uh, anchored navigation using for the map. So, <laughs> Very, uh, I have to go to the next step. So the next one is the interactive content with recursive multiplayer experience. What is? I wanted to develop this kind of interactive system in which the user generates their own auto egos in the virtual environment. This is the real environment. And uh, in the virtual environment, the alter egos interact with each other with uh, generated from other persons in real world. Now, of course, in the real environment, they can interact with each, each other. So, the, based on this idea, now we developed a video agent. So, this is interactive video content generated from live video taken from real world. The real, real world creatures, such as the human or animals, continue to behave autonomously based on events encountered in cyberspace. So this is uh, the overview of the technique. The, the images of several actions are recorded by movie cameras <coughs> in advance and stored in the database. And uh, in the, the cyberspace, the video agent, each of the video agents behave autonomous, autonomously and, and according to the event, they, uh, their emotional or physiological or, or parameter changed. And then, the, based on the parameters, the image are retrieved from the database and displayed continuously. This is the process of the image recording situation. The several or uh, typical actions are recorded and in advance and they stored in the database. Like this. And uh, each of the video agent has the uh, emotional and the physiological parameters and they the value will be changed according to the event. And based on the video agent technologies we developed the uh, Osaka developing story like this. Osaka, developing story. Osaka is my previous city. Why Osaka? It, 
Osaka, maybe as you know, a mecca for entertainment in history. They have the manzai or rakugo or some other places, and the first uh, universal studio uh, established in Osaka in Japan, in Asia. And moreover, the people in Osaka are more humorous or witty. Maybe than Seattle or Redmond. <coughs> uh, okay, so based on the idea technique of developed in the video agent, we developed uh, the Osaka de developing story to to demonstrate in a big event in Osaka. So now we introduce the online capture and restoration technique. The in the video agent that we demonstrate in the C Graph E Tech that we only use the offline capture system. The, in the Osaka developing story, we introduced the online. So the online person, the real person can easily participate in, and in the virtual space uh, to appeal to the public. So the, in the Osaka developing story, we have several ideas. The, for example, uh, the world design. It's a, it's a downtown of Osaka in almost 100 years ago. Uh, the background is an animation movie, uh, like this. And I think it's a good idea to show the next movie. This part is almost similar to the other, uh, to the previous video agent. So this is the collaboration with the TV broadcasting company in Osaka, and uh, beside me, the gentleman and lady as a real caster, TV caster in the broadcasting company. So they appeared in the TV program every day. So the, in order to change the parameter of emotions, the Coins will give the positive effect, and fire will give the negative effect. So by giving the coin the fires, is a uh, we can control the more uh, actions indirectly, but the directory we can give the trajectories like this. So my plan is to participate in the Olympic game in London. So now I'm controlling, I'm interacting with myself in the virtual environment. This is what I said in the recursive interaction. So he's angry. So they uh, the real participants mainly. Yes, now we demonstrated this one in the event in Osaka in nineteen uh, two thousand nine. Uh, the one hundred eighty person participated 
in this demo and became the agent. Like this. The, in the, yeah, this is the collaboration with the TV broadcasting company. So this kind of setup is very easy for us. It's, a, it's by myself, it's very difficult, but uh, it's easy. Uh, anyway, then with the cooperation, with the help of the TV technicians, the, we recorded some, several actions for the on-site participants from walk, jump, turn, and action for joy. This is an example of an action for joy. The, they can go inside of the, the the cyberspace and walking, jumping, something like that. And action or joy, for example, maybe can you make the action or joy right now? Like that. In Osaka, there are a few. This is like this. That's similar. <laughs> but remember, this is the mech of entertainment. Humor is very witty in Osaka. For example, like this. Anyway, the participants were very happy. I, I also was very happy because the, I understand oh, they are very happy now. And I put the message board to their own alter egos. For example, the, almost of them are written in Japanese, but uh, mm, I'm not sure this is correct translation, but uh, for example, the wow, he looks much more alive than I. The people in every day, every day life seems to have difficulties for business or in their house or relationship with others, something like that. But in that area, they are free from that kind of problems. So from their viewing point, that their alter egos is very active and cute. So I'm very satisfied with the result of this uh, research work or demonstrations. And based on this experience, I'm going to develop the new type of interactive contents based on uh, the, the technique and is the details not decided yet, but I'm going to continue this kind of research. Anyway, final topic I'm going to introduce a little bit is controlling the atmosphere in the conversation space. As I said, I wanted to peep. I want to make the people, all the people in the environment. The, for, for example, when some people are talking to each other, the, some of them are very tired, and some of them very actively speak a little bit to each other. But uh, some of them spoiled. Another person is very hot or warm. In that situation, I think everyone want, must be happy. So in order to make such kind of situation, I started this project. The first, the, the environment must be sensed by some adequate sensors. And uh, we have to model and uh, estimate the, the activities of the atmosphere. That we have to establish the relationship between the uh, human non-verbal or sometimes the verbal information extracted from sensors and the, the activity of the atmosphere. The, by using the measured atmosphere, we can control the content to show and to do display in the environment. By using this loop, I'm going, I wanted to control the environment. It is really true. So I, I started the very preliminary experiments using the uh, triadic conversation environment. Uh, the, we measure the relationship between the human nonverbal information 
using the extracted some of the tracking, three major tracking sensors and the accessorometers and uh, the microphone or something like that. And so this is a detail of the sensors and the apparatus. And anyway, I found that we, 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 we investigated several measurements like this, uh, the dish frequency, the speaker time, something like that, 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 and carefully examined each of them and found the activity of the atmosphere can be represented by using the speaking time and the hand acceleration and head orientation frequency. The, <laughs> the, the relatively a higher the, Anyway, it seems to be possible to measure the activity of the atmosphere in the room. So the, how can we use this result? The, the supposed application can be considered within the brainstorming, drinking parties, or festival parties, for example. And this kind of system is might be useful, for example, in a drinking or buffet style. You, the students are strongly motivated because he, they thought this system is, might be uh, must be useful in the uh, in the situation of the drinking party, which it, the and the girls and boys come together to drink and join party and become friend or something like that. We, we call in Japanese a gokon, something like that. The group of younger students and the, the from. Uh, from women's school or men's school, come together and meet and chat and uh, become friends. So they establish the demo system like that. So this is barely the first, uh, the preliminary version, but uh, they really uh, make this kind of situation using the cup uh, installed in the accelerometers or microphone here and the three dimensional trackers like that, uh, the, like before. And something demonstrated, uh, uh, image uh, displayed. Oh, it is possible to. I'm not sure. Oh. Anyway. So the activity, measured activity is displayed for the feedback to the participants. <laughs> And uh, the interest of each participant uh, uh, asked in advance, and based on that uh, information, we displayed the topic. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Anyway, this is just a started uh, project that we have to uh, make more accurately calculated uh, uh, activity must be used in the application. So this is just the beginning. So the it very first, uh, firstly, I 
introduced several research activities when I started in Osaka and continue the Tohoku University. Anyway, my purpose is to make everyone happy through the interactive content. Thank you very much for your kind attention and support from the friend all over the world. Thank you very much for listening. kind of done a mix of, you know, if you, if you had a projection system that was fast enough, right, you could have done it all in the time domain, right, and just have separate images for each person with their shuttered classes. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I guess you could imagine even going, you know, if you had the right lenticulars or whatever, you could do it all spatially <laughs> as well, right, um, based on where people are looking from. So it's, it's an interesting mix that you've gotten there between you know, spatial and time domain mm. for, for multiplexing it. Oh, to, to, to achieve the yeah. stereoscopic? Yeah. Oh, yes, it's possible. And, uh, yeah, the first read, uh, we, yeah, so there are several types of the stereoscopic display that we used in the prototype of the illusion hall. Mm -hmm. Some of them is uh, shuttering at active stereo, and uh, some of them is uh, using uh, passive stereo, they're using uh, polarization. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, of course, in the, we, we combine with the active and the polarization. The, for example, the left and the right images or active and uh, passive, we can combine. The multiply the four different kind of images that's been displayed, for example. But uh, it always has to struggle with the time domain, the limitation of the time. So now I, I try to use the solution of the spatial or ones. So this is the, the approach is a little bit different, but uh, we, of course we can combine each other. Have you ever tried actually building the large illusion holes that you go straight through ah, the videos? Just, yeah, we didn't have a sponsor. So <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to discuss with the uh, Disney World or uh, Universal <laughs> Studio, but uh, it's not. Uh, Realized. Does, sorry. Um, no, go. Did did you try um, like wall mounted versions rather than strictly tabletop displays? I don't see, the, say again. Which did, did you try wall mounted versions of the illusion? Wall mounted. Oh, wall mounted. Mm. Ah, I, I showed in the movie. It's uh, just on the. I calculated the parameters, but uh, it's not achieved yet. You said it was one of your goals to um, uh, make it fun for people to uh, to interact in, in your uh, systems. Do you have any uh, metric of how do you measure fun? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question, but uh, yes, the in the the final project I showed today, the in the framework I wanted to examine the happiness or uh, fun or something like that. So now, through the experience, uh, that project is a joint project with the uh, at the psychologist. So the way probably, um, I hope to get some kind of information you mentioned in I'm just similar wondering areas. if you can actually use the data or some results from your second to last project where you did, when you actually captured what what people uh, appear to have uh, fun. Uh, 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 exactly. Right, I mean, I know that those are exaggerated, but it seems kind of interesting to actually use uh, that to detect uh, fun in your yes, next Yes, yes, uh, yes, I think so. So, it's a, mm. so the, without using kind of the explicit sensors, we wanted to change the, the parameters, inside the parameters of the virtual existence of myself, for example, 
your, your, yourself and behave automatically is one of the sub goal of that system. Thanks again. To our Thank you very much. Thank you.